is sponsored by Dream. <laughs> the following body cam footage has been shared by police activity on August 22nd of this year. Moises May, 36 years old, tied a dog chain around his girlfriend's neck and bolted it to the floor of a second story bedroom. Neighbors nearby were hearing screams of a lady and decided to call the police. On August 16, around 7 p.m., police tried to enter through the first floor, but quickly realized that it had been barricaded. They tried kicking in doors and breaking windows, but were unsuccessful. At one point, one of the officers points at the open window on the second floor. They grabbed one of the ladders from the neighbors and climbed up. We see a ladder. Is it my Osuna? Oh, fuck you, baby. I'll be quick. Can you just open up? He did what? Is he Hispanic? What follows now is truly crazy, almost unbelievable. Yeah, but he's got a lot of phone agent logs and the next thing up. Where's the key? I know he's got it on his feet. And he's got it on his feet. In the room, a woman can be seen with a chain around her neck. She's apologizing to the officer, seemingly thinking that it's her fault that she got tied up. But there's no one else in here, right? No, you can just... The paramedics can be seen using a bolt cutter to remove the chain around her neck. Two days after the incident, the perpetrator got caught and was arrested. He faces multiple charges, including abduction. As for the background of this incident, an arrest citation revealed by Law and Crime says that both were arguing, which ended up in a violent reaction by the perpetrator. He allegedly threatened her life multiple times, took her phone, chained her to the floor and then left. He has pleaded not guilty to the charges and had a court hearing. Due to the fairly recent nature of this case, I haven't been able to find an update on this. This case immediately reminded me of that one woman chained up somewhere in eastern China. Her teeth were pulled out, and her tongue tip was removed in order to silence her. She was being used to breed children. The torment this woman faced for multiple years is one of the worst things that I've seen. I might cover this more elaborately, because stuff like this is way more common than one might think. To this day, there may be many people being held captive in their own homes, and are hoping to get rescued one day. If you're enjoying the video so far, make sure to subscribe to catch the next episode. You can always unsub later. The following dashcam footage was shared on Reddit by user JDVX8. It's from February 26, 2022 and happened in Chile. He gave it the title, What to do if they try to steal your car. In the footage, we can already see some suspicious activities before the carjacking itself. The car can be seen slowing down more than necessary. It eventually stops. Once the car stopped, four people can be seen leaving the car and running towards the driver. The driver seems to have suspected that this would happen and he quickly accelerated, damaging the perpetrator's car and fleeing the scene in a surprisingly calm manner. On Reddit, he gives additional context, reading, To give more context, this happened in Chile. 
I wasn't driving, but I often used that route. Here, this type of carjacking has become so common that it's a risk to get out in the car after 10 p.m. and all drivers have learned to keep their distance from the front cars on exits. As for any updates, there have never been any, with this comment being one of two that the Reddit user ever posted. Before we continue, let's sweetly talk about Dream, today's sponsor. With New Year's rolling around, it's the perfect time to start implementing new healthy routines. This is where Dream comes in. It personally helped me fall asleep faster, stay asleep longer, and wake up feeling more energized. I think I speak for the majority when I say that even just falling asleep has become very difficult in today's time, and most just don't even wake up feeling refreshed. Dream arrives as a powder and it tastes really good. The issue with these healthy products is that most just taste horrible. I'd say Dream tastes like a cup of hot chocolate with a dash of cinnamon flavor and it's just 15 calories per serving. After consuming Dream, the biggest difference for me was the improvement of sleep quality. I felt more refreshed waking up and it also helped staying asleep. I love that Dream has high quality sleep ingredients that leave me with zero grogginess the next day. In a clinical study, 93% of participants said that Dream helped them get a better night's sleep and wake up feeling more refreshed. Click the link in the description below or scan the QR code to get up to 40% off. Don't miss out on this limited time offer. Discount is automatically applied at checkout. Hunter Hogan is a YouTuber who performed various surgeries on himself to remove his tumor. Previously, he used to be a lawyer in the US, but later became homeless. The bio of his YouTube channel reads, I'm not a YouTuber. I'm a disabled, impoverished homeless person. I never wanted to be a YouTuber. I make videos because support from viewers has kept me alive since October 2019. With enough support, I can heal and be self-sufficient again. He has a pretty active YouTube channel where he would document his life and his conditions as a homeless person. <coughs> Eleven years ago, I started having to beg for for help to get back on my feet and to not, for my life to not decline more. I had to beg for. Uh, I'm I'm still ashamed that I am too weak, too sick to take care of myself. He also has a website where he posts videos of himself performing self-surgeries, likely because he doesn't have enough money to pay for a surgery. The title of some of the videos read, Cauterizing infections on my left knee, Self-surgery on a mole, and Self-surgery on tumor. I definitely cannot show anything here because of its graphic nature, but it's really disturbing. The condition of Hogan is deteriorating day by day, and it is honestly painful to watch. Breaking out of the trap of chronic homelessness is difficult. One of my barriers is that I don't have enough income. Besides that, being homeless makes each task more challenging. Right now, for example, I was trying to search online for a permanent place to live. The internet started intermittently cutting in and out. I don't know why, and I don't have any control over it. Then a dog started barking, and for me, that's a problem, Ca create symptoms. I put some earplugs in, that helped. I have a bunch of other health problems, creating issues, and, and require some of my time and attention. You might have noticed this cut-up earplug in my mouth. I'm using this because um, my teeth sometimes get so sharp that they cut my gums or lips or inside of my mouth. Currently, he lives off of the money he makes from his Patreon. This case reminded me of that one Russian YouTuber who is also engaging in self-surgery, trying to cut out cameras in his eye. If you haven't seen that, it's the first topic I talk about in episode 9 of this format. I've wanted to cover this case for a while because the footage, even though it was captured such a long time ago, is truly horrifying. Without context, it almost seems fake. Many of you should be familiar with the case Jesse Joe's daughter. However, the videos made by the perpetrators throughout this entire case are truly something else. Jesse fell victim to what looks like a twisted reenactment of the slasher film Scream. 
The perpetrators Brian Lee Draper and Tori Michael Adamczyk, both 16 years old at the time, recorded documentary-style videos, claiming that they wanted to do the same thing at the high school that they saw in the Scream horror movies. The target was Jesse, also 16 years old. What follows now is a very strategic assassination of Jesse, thoroughly documented, leaving no room for speculation that this was random or that they didn't know what they were doing. They state numerous times that they know that it's wrong to do it, but that they had to stick to the plan. Have you seen Tori? He's supposed to be in here at 7.30 and it's 8 and 19. He's an hour late. You, you don't even care, do you? <laughs> okay. September 26th, we're skipping the last fourth hour. We're not even applying right now. family. She acted number one. We have to the She's perfect, so she's gonna die. <laughs> what follows is a car ride. There should be no odd against people. I know it's a wrong thing, but hell, 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 you restrict somebody from it, they're gonna want it more. We found our victim and Saz may be. She's our friend, but you know what? We all have to make sacrifices. Our first victim is going to be Cassie's daughter. She's going to be alone in a big, dark house out in the middle of nowhere. How perfect can you get? I, I mean, like, holy sh**, dude. I'm horny just thinking about it. Hell yeah. Both guys decide to dress up in all black and wore white masks, entering her basement, which they unlocked themselves before. September 22nd, 2006. We know there's lots of doors. There, there's lots of places to hide. I locked the back doors. That's all locked. Now we just gotta wait. Both were armed with nice. They tried to lure her to the basement, but all attempts were unsuccessful. Instead, they went up to the living room. After taking her life, they quickly jumped back into their car. I just Cassie. We just left her house. This is not a f joke. I'm shaking. I stabbed her in the throat and I saw her lifeless body. Just. And disappear. Dude, I'm just Cassie. Oh, oh, that felt like it wasn't even real. I mean, it would buy so. Up, we gotta get our act straight. Okay. During the interrogation, both guys were blaming each other for committing the act. Brian claimed that Tori commanded him to do it, after initially denying that he did it. They are obviously rotting in prison now, receiving mandatory sentences of life imprisonment without the possibility of parole. Okay, I will butcher the following name. I think it's Richard Siagian. He was a YouTuber and a tattoo artist who was suffering from an extreme case of fatal insomnia. Although pretty rare, the disease can lead to a complete inability to sleep. In one of his videos, he explained how he has not slept for four months and is in desperate need of help. I have, um, I have not sleep means I have total insomnia. So it's been four months and my body is deteriorating right now. Uh, because my immune system is falling from not able to sleep. In the video, we can see how tired he looks and how he's unable to talk properly. According to Rickard, the condition began in the month of August, shortly after he joined a new job. He was suffering from a urinary tract infection and it was very uncomfortable for him to work. In order to help him out, his boss gave him some medicine. Initially, Rickard felt better and was able to work. However, as the situation unfolded, he began noticing that something was off. He was unable to sleep and was suffering from terrible back pain. After a while, that you know, I thought I was not able to sleep because of my UTI or, or uh, taking this medicine for a while. Not until I realized after a while that when I stop this medication, I'm not able to sleep any longer. Whenever he tried to sleep, he would experience a sudden electric shock back in his spine. Due to his condition, Rickard had to be completely bedridden, rendering him unable to do any work or follow his passion. According to him, the medicine he took contained an ingredient called nuclear fluoride that acted as a neurotoxin and crosses brain's blood barrier, completely damaging his neurons. This is uh, looks like this medica medication which is uh, contain uh, nuclear 
fluoride that can cross on my brain brain barrier. Probably this is what causes my problem now. So I want to check out of my the damage to my mitochondria on the spinal cord and, and, and nerves. At the time, Rickard was working in Philadelphia, but had to go back to Indonesia to visit his mother as she was sick. Once he arrived, he went to a doctor who prescribed him some medicine, but that didn't seem to work for him. The medicine would make him more anxious and worse in his situation. I need life. I need life. I do need life. You know, I don't want to die. You know, I don't want to die. So please help me. In the description, he would ask people for help as he needed to undergo a surgery, but he faced a shortage of money. He explained how he feels during the day. It reads, Hi, my name is Rickard Siagian. I've been suffering from a health condition caused by a heavy neurotoxic protocol that caused damage to my system, such as mitochondrial depletion, etc. But the most debilitating and certainly life-threatening condition from it is complete inability to sleep. Since this injury happened, my brain became wild awake 24-7 for a year now, and I have lost natural sleeping onset because of the failure to register. When my tired and sleepy body keeps begging for more sleep, my system doesn't understand. Instead, it responds with constant neural pain and debilitating sensation and pressure deep along my spine and my chest and whole body. The feeling of being electrocuted, drained, vacuumed, mixed with the feeling of falling from a high place for hours in the entire day, noon, until evening and often taken with sudden surge as a sleeping rejection feedback. This whole reaction is the most tormenting and abusive pain I've ever felt in my life and still bearing it until now every day. I've tried to cope with the situation with positive thought, but I'm just a human. Only one thing that I could wish for as my last hope is pluripotent stem cell treatment. But the challenge is money. God, I would have my both legs chopped off as an exchange if I could sleep for at least three hours at night without substances. That's how desperate I am for sleep. Following the video, Rickard would start getting attention and would begin documenting himself as his conditions deteriorated. As time went on, the videos got more and more creepy. In the videos, we can clearly see Rickard trying to sleep, but as soon as he's about to doze off, he abruptly wakes up. The medicine he took has been known for its extreme side effects such as nerve damage and paralysis. Eventually, Rickard would post his final video. Five days before his death, on the 9th of December 2016, after going 15 months without sleep. Just imagine not being able to sleep for over a year. This case deals with a very deranged cult of a guy seeing himself as a vampire and recruiting women for this sect. It ends with the woman's life being taken and her body being found dismembered in body bags. Sydney Louf was a 24-year-old woman who went missing after going on a date with a woman she met on Tinder. Before going on the date, she posted a selfie on her Snapchat with the caption, ready for my date. She never returned. Concerned for her safety, her parents contacted local law enforcement. Her car was still parked in the driveway of her home, but she was nowhere to be found. The woman she met was Bailey Boswell, who used a fake name. She called herself Audrey. Pretty interesting choice, because her boyfriend is called Aubrey Trail, so only a single letter is different in the names. Bailey and Sydney decided to meet up. The location for the meetup was Sydney's own home. Surprisingly, the first date went really smoothly, so they went for a second date the next day. A CCTV camera captured Sydney leaving her workplace at around 6 p.m. and heading home. Bailey Boswell told police that she didn't know where Sydney was. Before police could question further, she took off with her boyfriend Aubrey. Alarmed by the sudden disappearance of Sydney, law enforcement went on to check her room, only to find her glasses and purse left in the apartment. Furthermore, her cat was not fed, which was very unusual. The landlord, who lived above Bailey's apartment, also complained of a strong bleach-like smell coming from the basement. The smell was really strong. It made one of the family members living above puke. Another strange thing was that the air conditioner in her apartment was left on even in the month of November. The officers also confirmed that Sydney's cell phone was last located near Bailey's apartment. The prime suspects of the case were Bailey Boswell and her boyfriend Aubrey Trail. Aubrey was the leader of a cult and identified as a vampire. He had intimate relationships with multiple women, whom he referred to as his witches. He had a bizarre set of rules that all of his witches followed. Some of them include messaging him every three hours, not talking to other men, calling him their sugar daddy, and most surprising of all, 
taking someone else's life. Aubrey also had a history of frauds and human trafficking. At the time of Sydney's disappearance, Bailey and Aubrey were already on the run for conducting fraud in Kansas. Finally, the officers got a search warrant for their apartment, but they seemed to have known that this would happen, so they quickly fled. Days later, the following footage was made public. In the footage, we can see Aubrey and Bailey purchasing a 12-inch hacksaw, two gallons of bleach, a few trash bags, a folding tree saw and a knife only a few hours before Sydney's second date. An hour later, Aubrey would enter Menards, which was Sydney's workplace. At the time, Sydney was unaware, so she didn't really notice him. While in Menards, Aubrey would buy some more bleach and leave around 20 minutes later. In another footage, at Edvard Mall, both Bailey and Aubrey can be seen purchasing food grinders, a wheat cutter and a folding saw. After the footage was released, the police announced Aubrey and Bailey to be persons of interest and that they were searching for them. What happened next was honestly quite unbelievable. Good morning, Lincoln and Omaha and probably several other places. This is Aubrey Trail and this is Bailey Boswell. I guess y'all also know her as Audrey. But we spent the last few days watching ourselves being slammed and crucified in the newspapers and the news and everything else, so we thought it was time we had our say. Aubrey and Bailey posted a video of themselves on Sydney Lewis Facebook page. In the video, they claim that they are innocent and that they have nothing to do with the case. The Lincoln Police Department apparently wants everyone to believe that we're hiding, that we haven't talked to them, that we're avoiding them. They're telling you that they have all these leads, that Sydney was last seen in um, Wilbur. You've heard all of this stuff about my criminal history. All true. Been convicted of bad checks and forgery and all that good stuff. I guess I'm a person of interest on now. I pray for Sydney. I hope she's found soon. I wish the family the best. I'm sorry that she wasn't with you on Thanksgiving. This video is very strange, especially in the way they talk. They seem to be unusually calm about the situation. Soon after, Aubrey would make another video talking about his views on humanity and America. They were caught staying in a motel in Branson, Missouri. They were planning to escape to Mexico. A few days later, Sydney's dismembered remains were found alongside a gravel route around 60 miles from her date location. Body parts were found wrapped inside trash bags, along with a few sex toys, rubber gloves, apparels and bedsheets. Initially, both Aubrey and Bailey claimed their innocence. However, as days passed by, the confessions began to change. During the trial, Aubrey would suddenly stab a sharp object in his neck and fall to the ground. Please be seated. Bailey is innocent and I curse you all. He was quickly rushed to the hospital and was saved. The trial would continue and both Aubrey and Bailey were found guilty. Trail was sentenced to death, while Boswell was sentenced to life. This case is quite recent and is about a TikToker and her mother taking the life of a guy who was dating her mother. But let's start from the beginning. Mahek Bukhari was a semi-successful TikToker with nearly 130,000 followers. She dropped out of university to pursue a social media career. Through brand deals and product launches, she was earning a quite considerable amount of money. Her mother, Ansreen, was a big part of her social media presence, even calling it an elite relationship, whatever that means. Mahek's mother, Ansreen, dated a guy named Saqib in 2019. It lasted about three years. You need to keep in mind that there is a big age gap between those two. Eventually, she tried to break off from him, but he then threatened to blackmail her with explicit images, saying that he would send them over to her husband. Ansreen told all of this to her daughter Mahek. Instead of going to the police, she was plotting on punishing Saqib. They set up a meeting, promising Saqib £3,000 if he kept silent about the blackmail. This was around the same amount Saqib claims to have spent on the relationship. Mahek was assisted by multiple men in her plan on taking Saqib's life. They were supposed to meet at a local Tesco car park with Saqib. Saqib and a friend of his named Hashim, who was completely unaware of anything, went to the location, realized that something was wrong and then drove away. They were followed by two cars. Saqib, realizing what was going on, called the police. He stated numerous times that he feared for his life and that the cars following were ramming him. He was begging the police to come. However, the police never came. He crashed his car into a tree, leading to the explosion of the car. 
They both didn't survive. The perpetrators were later caught by CCTV footage. They were exchanging messages. There's police body cam and interrogation footage of the encounter with Mahek. Yeah, and then we went straight to uh, Nottingham. Right. Okay. In the Audi. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, a Leon, Seat Leon, don't know the model or anything, but it was blue, come straight down, no speed, nothing, normal, on the right hand side, we were always on the left hand side, this right hand side car's come now, the, the Leon, the, the blue one, has come straight next to me, and come right in front of me, not very close, I've always said to myself, I'm a very good driver when it comes to this, I've been driving for five years, four to five years. Without showing the rest, she's basically constantly lying and crying, trying to guilt trip the officer, which obviously didn't work. Justice was served. Mahek received a life sentence, with a minimum sentence of 31 years and 8 months, Unstream receiving 26 years and 9 months. And the other perpetrators received similar sentences. The following pictures were uploaded by a woman on Facebook. I initially found this through a post on RBI made 2 weeks ago. Most of the stuff hasn't been archived, so I'm only working with things uploaded to Imgur. I'll also be mostly referring to information shared by OP in the following. The woman used to clean empty houses before they were sold or after someone had died in them. While she was performing her regular job of cleaning a house, she stumbled across something really odd. She found a house with door traps and multiple hidden rooms. The house was located in a rural area in Northern California. The home was quite old, was supposedly built in 1941, and has been owned by the same family ever since. She mentioned in her post that the layout of the house is really strange. And there is no flow at all and has some poorly made secret rooms hidden inside the walls. The house is currently owned by the daughter of the original owner and she only visited the building as a child, so had really faint memories of it. Within the garbage, she found several stained mattresses, which the current owner believed could just be stains of juice. However, it could really be anything. On the main floor, a hidden room was found off the side of the bedroom. This was an unusually long room with a mysterious hole and a door at the end. The room was perfectly blended into the walls in order to stay hidden. The room also has a box with old shop light fixtures in it. The bedroom was even stranger. The layers of carpet were not stapled to the floor. The closet was large and had a window overlooking the front yard. In the closet, there was a door trap leading to a small basement-like room. The room was once again hidden and was only distinguishable because of a hole, which is used to lift the door open. According to the poster, the door was really heavy, approximately 45 pounds. In the small basement-like room, the woman found handmade beds, several vent holes, two small empty cabinets, and a small old-style wood-burning cookstove. The contents of the stove were really disturbing and prompted her to immediately call local law enforcement. According to her, she cannot disclose the contents of the stove as they are a part of an ongoing investigation. If I had to guess, it may have been human parts like bones or maybe a limp that had been cut off. On a steel frame, she found several sets of initials and a cross scratch into the frame. The attic room was also hidden by a large sheet of wood tacked to the wall in order to cover the door frame. When the door was found, she immediately noticed a crude latch and that it was locked from the outside. Inside the room, she found two more beds with mattresses. The green carpet was not tacked down and underneath were some old newspapers from the 70s. The windows were nailed shut. They looked out at a neighbor's home. This room also had no electricity and none of the hidden rooms had any plumbing for waste disposal. The home had been vacant for a month. According to her, the atmosphere of the house is unsettling. She said she would disclose what was in the stove once the investigation is finished. However, the post was made almost three years ago and there hasn't been any update whatsoever. One comment on the Facebook post stood out. I live in this small, seemingly middle of nowhere, but on the way to everywhere town. I come from a long line of law enforcement, many still active and some semi-local. I haven't lived here my whole life, but I've been here a good chunk of it now and I've learned some very solid things. Be careful with what you post. This area has some deep secrets within its community and there are people who have backstories you'd never imagine. People will be polite as can be to your face, but behind closed doors, don't count on that same grace. Even in today's day, we have active, hateful and violent cults in our rolling hills, behind gates that are right up on the road. Just be safe and wise with how you handle this. One of the Reddit users found the address of the house, as it was listed on Zillow with only the exterior pictures of it. The description of the house matches with the info shared in the post. It was sold in December of 2020 and resold more recently. It seems to be now used for rental. There were no pictures of the interior available anywhere on the internet 
and the mystery still remains as to what exactly was in the stove. If you want to get caught up with the previous episodes, check out the playlist. If you've missed the previous upload, click here to see it.